iré a donde they won't be fighting today today if they had known this they won't be fighting today today if they had known this they won't be fighting today They do not know that Babylon is among them. They do not know that Babylon is in their heart. They do not know that the system is Babylon. They do not know. They had known this, they won't be fighting today. To explore and teach the hidden mysteries. Barakateda to redeem Bayana Nayanaya Bashiagaba, the people of the Lord. For my people perish because of lack of knowledge. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here to teach you on a message that says how God fought democracy in Nigeria. I repeat again. How God fought democracy in Nigeria. What is happening in Nigeria or what has happened in Nigeria that is still happening is not far from what happened in the book of Genesis chapter 11. When the sons of Noah gather themselves in mutuality, in their stupidity to erect and construct a building against the wish, the will, the wisdom of God. And the Lord sent Babylon among them and they were scattered and the building was left uncompleted. The project was abandoned. How many projects in Nigeria has been abandoned? How many agenda has been left unaccomplished? When the man Yaradua came with his seven point agenda, he left it halfway. Many of them would come with different agenda and end up achieving nothing because you cannot build when the Lord God is not building with you. The watchmen watched in vain when the Lord God watched not with them. Until God involves, until God becomes your supplement and your strength, you can never achieve whatever you devise. The Bible said, let them take counsel 
it shall not stand. Let them speak the word, it shall come to naught. So anytime men gather together to plan without the support of the Almighty, it ends up in disaster. The Bible said in the book of Psalm chapter 2, that certain people gather themselves together with imaginations which the Lord considered evil. And the Bible said, and the Lord shall laugh at them. In other words, God shall mock at them. He said he will have them in direction. Nigeria has been mocked. Nigeria has been sarcastic among the nations of the earth because they planned and they always plan without acknowledging God. The Bible said in Proverbs chapter 3, in all your ways acknowledge him, he shall direct your paths. He said, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. In other words, it becomes evil when you don't acknowledge God, when you are to set out goals and agendas. When God is not the master planner, then you are about to start a thing and not end it. The Bible said, before you start building, first of all, count the cost. If you'll be able to start and finish, as you become a mockery, a laughing stock, an object of ridicule, a tool of sarcasm. That is why each time they, 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 they plan, they conceive within themselves and they come out to divulge what they are going to do. They end up not achieving it because God was not invited. The Bible said in the book of John chapter 2, there was marriage in the Canaan. There was marriage in what? In Cana. And Jesus and his disciples were invited. Whenever you are to do a thing and you don't invite God, Satan will come. You failing to invite God means you have created, it indicates that you have created a platform for Satan to minister. So it becomes a satanic administration because the wisdom of God is not there. And for you to know the prerequisite, the significance and the importance of Jesus' presence in every occasion, in every activity that is hosted in planet Earth. The Bible said when the wine was exhausted, the mother came to him and said, son, there is no wine. And he replied to the mother, he said, Woman, my time is not yet my time. My time has not yet come. And the mother said to the servant, he said, Whatever he tells you, do. So when God is not saying something and you are doing something, you are, you are asked to disgrace yourself. Whatever he tells you, do. Now the first thing he told them was to put water in the water pot. Has Nigeria put water in the water pot? And when they obeyed, he turned the water to wine. The reason why Nigeria is lacking wine, is lacking sweetness, it is because they have not invited Jesus. Until Jesus is invited, there will be no wine. Until Jesus is invited, the marriage will be a blunder and a goof. There was lack and want because Jesus was not yet called. Do you know the importance of the presence of God, the sons of the prophet were out to cut woods so they can enlarge their coast. They said, thou man of God, the place where we dwell with thee is too small for us. He said, please go with us. They invited God because they know that theocracy will remove everything that stands to object goodies. They understand when God begins to rule in the kingdom of man, then everything will begin to fall in obedience. When they began to cut wood, the Bible said the ass head fell inside the water. Nigeria has fallen inside the water. They need a prophet to bring them out. And the Bible said they cried. Alas, my master. He said the ass head was borrowed. If they had money, they wouldn't have borrowed a, 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 an ass. So instead of them to advance and move forward, they went backward. Because there was a demon who came to confront them and stop advancement. Each time Nigeria tries to advance by, by borrowing money from other nations, they end up in debt because no prophet is with them. 
God is out to help in the time of need. That is why the Bible calls him the very present help in the time of need. So when God is invited, anytime issues emanate, then the, the Spirit of God will eradicate the issue. Because Elisha was there, the ass head came out. He understood a system that the individuals did not understand. Nigeria is out and set to achieve a goal, but do you understand the mystery behind what you are about to achieve? Do you understand the, the secret and the wisdom to demystify the hurdles and the obstacles that want to prevent what you want to achieve? A prophet understand this. I'm not talking about all these modern prophets that are, that are eating bribe and talking nonsense from the two sides of their mouth. I'm talking about men who has been with God. Elisha understood that you can cast a stick inside the water and the acid will come out. It's a system in the spirit. He understood you can cast a stick inside the water. Try it. It will work for you. There is a spiritual mindset that balances the equation when it is deployed. He casted the stick inside the water and the asset came and he said, stretch thy hand and take it. Nigeria will only take what belongs to them until God involves. A lot of debt because no prophet. A lot of setback, no prophet. A lot of trouble, no prophet. What we have are visionaries. What we have are soothsayers. What we have are predictors. Prophets are solution to their generation. They, 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 they break every satanic coagulations. Genesis chapter 11, verse 8. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. There was a time, child of God, that men came in Nigeria and had an agreement that different tribes should be unified. And it should be called Nigeria. God was not against the amalgamation. You know, some of you now you come and begin to say some certain things that uh, why did they amalgamate us? It is because their system failed them. That is why you see reasons not to agree with the amalgamation of Nigeria. You must understand that God allowed it for a purpose. I will reveal the purpose to you at the end of the sermon. But let me first of all deal with some, 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 some mysteries about how God has been battling Nigeria. The whole earth was of one language and of one speech. So when these men came together, amalgamated tribes, and they became Nigeria, God did not have issue with them. But when they adopted a system called democracy, in other words, God is subtracted. Satan is invited through the wisdom of mortals. And God said, this cannot work. That is where the spirit of Babylon entered Nigeria and began to salvage them from that time even till now. In verse 2, I read verse 1 of Genesis 11. Now verse 2, and it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shina and they dwelt there. Verse 3, and they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar. Verse 4, and they said, God told, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Let us make us a name. Child of God, when you are out in quest for a name, it must be in alignment with the wisdom of God. God promised Solomon, he said, I will give you name, a name among the kings who has name in the earth. And God fulfilled it in his own wisdom. God is not against you having a name. As a matter of fact, he's in the business of giving a name. But when the purpose, the achievement becomes an abomination that reaches heaven, then an issue will come. The Bible said, let it reach what? Heaven. Let what? The top. And they said, go to let us build a city and a tower whose top whose top may reach unto heaven. In other words, what they were telling God is that we are about to commit an iniquity that we get to heaven. Each time you see God saying that their iniquity has come up before heaven, it does not mean that when they started the iniquity, he didn't see their error. It means it has come to a level that he can no longer ignore them but to strike them. It means the sin has become too cyclopean, too Brobdenagian. 
too conspicuous, obvious and blatant, transparent enough to provoke and agitate the judgmental side of God. So when God begins to discipline mortals, it's as a sign of a sin that has come up to heaven. So before they could, the building could come up, their iniquity that came due to their evil imagination has reached heaven already. So God was scared and the Bible said God looked. In verse 5 now, and the Lord came down to see the city. Why did God come down? Something has disturbed his peace there. And the tower which the children of men built. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they began to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. God told, Let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. This is where the spirit of Babylon came. In verse 8, so the Lord scattered them abroad from tents upon the face of all the earth and they left off to build the city. What is my point? When God created Adam and Eve in Genesis, the Bible said God said multiply and replenish the earth. So the very wisdom and the mind of God was for men to multiply and fill the earth. That is why when God called Abraham into his covenant, he told Abraham, I'm going to make you the father of nations. Thy seed shall be like the seal of the sand of the seashore. Now, the wisdom of God from the beginning and in continuity is for men to multiply. But the imagination of these people scattered everything. So for them to build a tower was not the issue. For them to have a name was not the issue. But when they said they don't want to scatter, they want to be in one place. God said, Satanism has been invented by mortality. So at this point in time, brutality is the answer. The Lord changed their language. Babylon entered. This is the issue of Nigeria. The spirit of Babylon is savaging and ravaging Nigeria like a piece of garbage. That is why we are not speaking the same language. I'm not talking about tribal language. I'm not talking about the physical language child of God. The physical language is not the issue we have in Nigeria. The issue we have in Nigeria is the spiritual language that is changed. The language of the mind. We are in a generation where English has united every man. We, uh, we can understand ourselves through a system called English. But yet we find it to comprehend each other. There is Babylon in the church, Babylon in government, Babylon everywhere because God has sent a spirit because of the evil imagination of mortality. Because of what they have conceived, the conception betted disaster. The conception betted destruction. The conception betted delusion. We are in the state of perplexity and bemusement. The nation is razzled and dazzled. The nation is razzmatized beyond human comprehension. And if we must unravel this mystery that has blackened the heart of our understanding to our destruction and delusion, we must learn how to seek God in the secret place of the Most High. The problem in Nigeria has gone beyond academy. It has gone beyond scriptural knowledge it has to do with seeking the Lord there was a confusion in the kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar in the land of Babylon and Nebuchadnezzar needed answer to his confusion and he created another confusion by telling them to tell him his dream and interpret it and the men of Babylon were confused the astrologers fade the magicians fade the sorcerers fade the time gazers and the star gazers fade Everything that interprets dream in Babylon fade. Why? It has gone beyond books. Men understood how to interpret by studying books. Daniel was one of the men who understood knowledge by studying much. He was a man of too many books. But at this point in time, the wisdom that can come from letters, the wisdom that can come from history, the wisdom that can come from might, the wisdom that can come from legendary, fade every man. And Daniel knew that the only way is to kneel down and face the wall, lift his hands and call for the God who dwells in the secret place to reveal the secret to him. And that is how the coagulation was ameliorated. What is my point, child of God? The problem in Nigeria has gone beyond grammar, has gone beyond prophecy, has gone beyond every factor that has been deployed to help Nigeria. So that is why each time you gather together with your grammar, 
with, with, with your prayers and with your, your, your prophecies, nothing good is coming out because a system has been created that has stirred God from heaven and God has sent Babylon in the heart of mortals. Did you know the Babylon in Nigeria is not in the physical language we speak? It is in the heart. How do I know? The Bible said, and God changed the heart of Nebuchadnezzar and gave him the heart of animal. In Ezekiel, he said, I will take away from them the heart of stone and give them the heart of flesh. So it means there are people who are possessed with the heart of stone and there are people who are possessed with the heart of animal. And in Philippians chapter 2 verse 5, he said, let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. So it means there are diversities of mind. So when the nation conceives evil, God gives them Babylon in their heart. So when God wants to help the nation, he destroys Babylon. That is why the Bible said in the book of Revelation that he spoke with a loud voice, Babylon the great is falling. It is falling. So it means there is a beginning for Babylon and there is an end for Babylon. God has struck the nation with Babylon and when he remembers Nigeria the first thing he will address is Babylon. That is when God will change the heart of every man in Nigeria and give them one language in their heart and they begin to speak one language through the wisdom of the Almighty. The language they will speak then is the word of God. They will not speak Igbo. They will not speak Yoruba. They will not speak Hausa. Though this language will still exist but the wisdom of God will be the language that we bring them together now the Bible said in Acts of Apostle chapter 2 that when the Holy Ghost came mightily that they began to speak in tongues the language of God and men began to hear their language and understanding came and men were gathered before them and they began to ask what is going on and when Peter was done speaking the language of God to them they were all converted men of different tribes were converted unto God and it became a church. Now let me tell you why God allowed the amalgamation of Nigeria. Because Nigeria to God is an Israel. Nigeria to God is a church and the church must be certified. There is nothing that completes a church than different tribes, different language, different people, different color, different population coming together to have one mind. That is why Jesus went about choosing men from different family and they came together and became one. And the Bible said in Acts of Apostle that no man owned his property all by himself, but rather they shared everything together. They had everything in common because why? God has given them a language of unity that will not allow division. So that is why when a man came to create division to change the language and Ananias and Sapphira they died by the Holy Ghost because when God has started the work he must finish the work he said the hand of Zerubbabel has laid the foundation the hand of Zerubbabel will finish it he has started the good work in a life is capable to finish it one time God told me in the church he said do you know what it means to be capable I said what he said to start to be able to start and finish it in so Nigeria is not capable because God has not made them capable Nigeria is not capable because God has not supported them. When Gideon was frustrated, despite all the virtue, despite all the gift, despite all the talent, he could not achieve the desire of Israel for them to be liberated from the hand of the Midianites who oppressed them, who showed them tyranny in the fullest. The Bible said when the angel of God spoke the language of God to him, he said, go now in this thy strength. And that was when victory came. Oppression was lifted. Poverty will be lifted from Nigeria. Destruction and confusion will be lifted from Nigeria until the language of God come. Let the church pray for the language of God and that language will only come through theocracy until you seek the face of God. Do we not see? And you must understand that the language of God is confusion to his enemies and wisdom to his people. That is why when God wrote something on the wall, to Belshazzar it was confusion, but to Daniel it was an understanding. So when the language of God entered Nigeria like a rushing mighty wind, it will begin to kill the Ananias and Sapphiras. And fear will enter Nigeria. Tribalism is not the problem in Nigeria, child of God. When I mean tribalism, I'm talking about the, the, the diversities of tribe is not the problem in Nigeria. The problem in Nigeria is the tribalism of the heart. It's the nepotism of the heart. It's the favoritism of the heart that proceeded and emanated as a result of the Babylon which God sent into Nigeria. The heart of Nigeria is crowded with the spirit of Babylon. That is why one time when they were talking about Biafra, 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 I told them, I said, I'm not seeing Biafra. They were so mad at me. I said, what are you saying? 
uh, all these things that is happening in this country. Are you not seeing the oppression? I said, I'm seeing the oppression. Okay, is it good? I said, it's not good. Uh, what are you not saying? I told them that the victory you people desire will come by God, not by man. You are fighting for a good cause, but in the wrong way. And because you are not backed by God and it's against the original plan of God for Nigeria as a church, it won't stand. They were angry. They continued, and each time they come to me, I repeat the same thing. And now, where is the face of Biafra in the earth? They are all weakened because they fought without God backing them. They said uh, they are the children of Israel and uh, they are Moses. Who, who told you the man who led them is Moses? Where is the rod of Moses in his hand? When God sent Moses, he gave him a rod. And with that rod, he smite Egypt. Egypt was bent to their wish and demand. But rather, Biafra has been bent. What does it convey to you, child of God? It means he was never a Moses. There was never a rod with him. He fought for a good cause, but in a wrong way and against the original plan of God. God told me clearly there will be no division. It is one Nigeria. And he told me that it's going to come by the hand of the young prophet. And the system will be theocracy. So that is why I am coming out now to tell you, those of you who are fighting for position, sit down. Stop it. Stop it and seek for answers. Nebuchadnezzar got to a point as a king, as he, he was an absolute king. That's what they call monarchy and absolute monarchy. A king with absolute authority. That was who Nebuchadnezzar was, a king of kings. Yet at the time, he sat down to seek answers, to make inquiries. Instead of you to seek answers, from Daniel, you are seeking answers from, from, from your magicians, your, your sorcerers. Despite the, 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 the occultism, the rituals, the sacrifices, evil sacrifices, and satanic devices and strategies deployed, nothing positive, nothing creative, nothing lucrative, nothing profitable and marginal has come out, but rather all that ever came out is moga moga. You must that the Bible said that these men heard their language and they came. They said, ah, Are these people not Galileans? How come they are speaking our language? The Spirit of God at work. So when the Spirit of God begins to move, He begins to speak the language of every man. He gives every man an understanding. When Peter was done teaching, 3,000 men were converted that day from different tribes. A brother called me and he was angry. He said, I love your message and I've been following you. I love everything you've been teaching. But this time you started speaking concerning democracy and uh, how would this be possible? You know, Nigeria is a, is a multi-religious uh, nation and uh, with different tribes, with different this, with different that. So what makes you think it will be possible? And I told him, the Bible said, with God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. No exemption. All things are possible. You can never limit the omnipotent power of God. Whatever I am saying now, I am proving it from the word of God. It is not today. If he did it before, he will do it again. He will do it again. Some of you may begin to doubt what I am saying now, but listen to me. In the days of Elisha, Elisha gave a prophecy. And in, in those days, there was famine, I mean famine, harsh famine in Israel. And the children of Israel were dying of starvation and there was no possibility of abundance. And a man came from the blue, called Elisha, and said that there will be abundance by tomorrow. And a certain stupid, brutish, foolish man with doubt crowded in his heart came to Elisha and said, even if the windows of heaven open, it will not work. It will not function. It will not be possible. You are telling lies. And Elisha looked at him and said to him, He said, Your eyes shall see it, but your mouth will not taste from it. The Bible said, Let him that doubted not think that he will receive anything from the Lord. For a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. The man saw it, but he died before he could taste from it. There are many of you who are against what I'm teaching, fighting against what I'm teaching. 
but in the days of this victory, I pray that the mercy of God allow you to see it. Someone also asked me, he said, you are talking about democracy. I have said this before in one of my sermons, and I'm repeating it again for a reason. He said, you are always talking about democracy. Okay, is Nigeria the only nation that is practicing democracy? What about America? What about other nations that are prospering? And I told him, God said in Amos chapter 3 verse 1, Among God the nations of the earth, ye only have I known, O Israel. Therefore I will punish you because of your iniquity. Other nations were doing it, and God kept quiet for the time appointed for their, their terrible judgment. But when Israel did it, God de de descended on them in a hurry. So Nigeria is an Israel to God. So that is why Nigeria's case is different from the case of other nations. Go and seek the face of God. You understand these things I'm telling you. The man prophetic with Joshua knew these things. He had a foresight concerning these things before he died. That is why you saw him going about helping the Muslims, helping the Christians, helping everything. Everything. Why? Because he knew that Nigeria to God is a church. So he was not only ministering to his church synagogue of all nations, but he was ministering to Nigeria because he saw Nigeria as a church, not as a nation. A church! He was passing the message ironically, but men did not understand why he went about helping nations. I heard the man Bishop David Onyedipo saying some certain things that were so annoying. I, 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 was, I was so scared where I was when I heard him. He said when you when a Christian come to him and beg him money in the name of uh, God, that he will, he will he would give to the Christian. But when you say in the name of Allah, he won't give you. Is that not Babylon in the heart of a man who stands to represent God? That is Babylon. Discriminating in the church. That's why I told you that there is Babylon in the church and there is Babylon in Nigeria. Babylon everywhere. There is a Babylon which God created because of the sin Nigeria committed. And there is a Babylon which Nigeria herself has created. So both the one God created and the one Nigeria created will fall in the days of God's visitation by the young prophet. This is the voice of heaven. Son of David, wisdom is crying in the street of YouTube.